Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really glad that we can meet in this way, also in a distant variation of this presentation. I hope you will enjoy it, despite of that fact. Today we are facing a really serious problem. No, I'm not talking about COVID-19 situation. I'm talking about something really, really difficult, something really, really complicated that is harming our activities for not a days or a week, but for a years and will impact our lives for following months. I'm talking about climate change. Climate change is facing us against a lot of challenges because climate change is already coming with a heavy droughts and damaging floods. Damaging floods and droughts are harming population, are damaging property and will affect us more and more. Our company, MicroStep Miss, was established 27 years ago in the heart of the Europe, in the Slovakia. MicroStep Miss is a successful story. We provide a lot of solutions all around the globe, more than 75 countries, all around the globe, including North America, Africa, Asia and Europe. We are providing a lot of services, from the monitoring in the meteorology, climatology or hydrology, to the road safety and radiation safety monitoring, to forecasting and decision supporting systems in hydrology or in a really hard conditions. We installed thousands of stations, not only install, because we are the developer and manufacturer of the meteorological and hydrological stations. We've been involved in hundreds and hundreds of projects. We installed a lot of lot of solutions all around the world in many topics. We are not only the company which is delivering a part of the solution. We are delivering everything from the consultation, from the proposal to the final solution. We are developing stations, we are manufacturing stations, we are creating forecasting and monitoring systems. In 2014, we've been standing in the front of big challenge. Slovak Hydrometeorological Institute is a responsible authority for hydrological and meteorological monitoring and forecasting in the territory of Slovak Republic. This institution does have a lot of station or had a lot of station all around the Slovakia. They've been operating hundreds of meteorological and hydrological stations and two meteorological radars. The problem of this station network was that it was not covering the whole area of Slovakia. There was a lot of data gaps. So they need to fill these gaps and provide a lot of solutions which will be supporting decisions. You know, they got just monitored data, but they do not have any hydrological forecasting systems. So in 2014, they started a project Povapsis, and we've been a part of the team that was participating on this project. Povapsis project was focused on a many important tasks. Strengthening of station network. This strengthening should fulfill the data gaps that I mentioned before. Improvement of the system of radar measurement. Development of hydrological forecasting system, which will enable the hydrologists to provide decisions and development of the operation platform for the hydrologists in duty. And this is really important thing. So how we participated on this project? We helped to install the network of automatic weather stations. We installed uh, hundreds of stations all around the Slovakia. We installed automatic weather station. We installed automatic rain guard station. We developed application software for monitoring system and we developed hydrological model setup. Application software was based on our IMS4 platform. IMS4 platform is integrated monitoring system. It was already installed for many, many systems all around the globe, more than 200 installations in Europe, Asia, or in Africa. This system is designed for permanent operation 24-7 this system can be used for many purposes, from the hydrological operation to climatological operation, aviation operation, radiation monitoring operation. All this system can be based on this platform. This platform is a modular platform. It enables us to see measured data. It enables us to see modeled data and it enables us to set up all these systems in this modular, modular system. 
HIPOS, this is the name of the hydrological portal, is a modular system that was built just for Slovak Hydrometeorological Institute. It's accessible via standard web browsers. This system is a modular system, so we can see the separate models for visualization of data, for modeling, and for hydrological technological uh, link, and for station maintenance. HIPOS is based on a database. Database is the heart of the system. Database enables the user to take data from the, data, uh, from the database. Database enables the system to be working. System of the models is working independently on a user with the data from the database. All the time we can import data, we can export data from database. Automatic data quality control is included into this database. Automatic labeling of manually changed uh, values is included in this database. There is, a, there is a lot of selection and grouping tools, a lot of reportings and statistics. For example, how the user can provide a selection. The user enter the system and is able to choose a station that he wants to see, is able to choose a time frame that he wants to see, and is able to, to set up aggregation and filtering, which is based on some statistical values. In the end, the uh, user does have an overview of the data, can access the database, can enter the data manually, can provide manual the, the quality, data quality control, can provide a lot of operations that are uh, included in this database. Well, data visualization, as I said, the first part of the model is visualization of measured data. The setup of measured data that we would, we would like to see is really easy. The user will choose the stations that he would like to see, is able to choose parameter that he would like to see, or parameters, if he like. The user is setting up the time frame, and in the end, the system will visualize the values or actual state of the system in the map form. As you can see, we can zoom in and zoom out. We can see the actual values, and the map form can be switched to tabular form, where the user is able to see all the measured values. You can see that uh, the, the background color of measured values depends on the severity of measured data. For example, if uh, there is a heavy precipitation, the background color, color is different than in the case of, uh, of light precipitation. The user is able to switch to graphical mode and in this case, uh, the graphs of the fallen precipitation or measured precipitation and measured water level values are visualized in the graphical form. Map server is a really important part of the system. Do you know map server is enabling us to work as with, uh, with a GIS solution? So it does mean that the user is able to zoom in area, zoom out to area, is able to pan an area, is able to overlay all these layers in the system. For example, I can show you how the simple setup of layers is working. So, try to imagine that you need to uh, visualize the actual situation on hydrological station. It's easy. You will choose a layer which is called Stanice. It does mean in Slovak stations. The system visualizes the station network. We would like to see not only the actual status of station network, we would like to see, for example, the forecasted precipitation. Okay, we have a meteor forecast, we can choose a Aladine model, and we are able to visualize the amount of precipitation which is forecasted by Aladine model. So, as you can see, the working with the map server is really easy and intuitive. Let's move to important chapter. Let's move to the modeling part of the system. This modeling part is really huge, it's really massive, because there is a lot of models of different kind. We got rainfall runoff models, we got flow models, we got hydrodynamical models, we are working with commercial and free models, we are working with different inputs. Eladine model, ECNWF model, Eladine model deterministic ensemble, ECNWF model deterministic ensemble. It's a lot of inputs which is coming into the modeling system. And there is, uh, uh, of course, a lot of outputs which is available in this modeling system. This modeling system is working as a chain. At first, the system or the models are computing the outflow from the upper basin. 
Then the rich sections are used for a flood att attenuation simulation. Then it's going downstream. Again, the attribution of downstream uh, watersheds is computed. And in the end, for the forecasting profiles, the si model system is simulating the amount of water in selected time. Of course, there is a lot of work behind of these simulation tools. Try to imagine that we are providing uh, simulations for 125 forecasting profiles. For each of these profiles, the HEC HMS simulation is available and HBV simulation is available. For each of these profiles, we do have input from deterministic Aladine, deterministic ECM, 16 ensembles of Aladine and 51 ensembles of ECMWF. So it does mean that for each profile, we do have 134 scenarios of possible hydrological situation. Of course, without the inventory of the models, the user or operator won't be able to see if everything is working fine, won't be able to see if some model does not have any kind of problems. So we do have a model which is called uh, model inventory. And in this model, model inventory or model status model module, the operator is able to see if everything is working fine. So it does mean that if the model was running in the correct time and if, if the outputs of the model were correct and is able to see if all things are prepared for the next scheduled run of the model. I mentioned scheduled run of the model. Why? We have so many of modules that we need to have exact schedule where the models are running in which time. This schedule of hydrological models is based on a meteorological models. So we know when Aladine is running, so we can able to predict in which time the hydrological model will be running too. So in the end, we have a schedule and we can see in uh, selected time in which the, the outputs of the models will be available. So how the user can be able to access the um, model output? There are two ways. I will demonstrate to you the, the simpler way of the access of the output of models. Try to imagine that we would like to see uh, the output of modeling for a river which is called Nitra. We can click on a Nitra river, select station that we would like to see the prediction, and the model automatically generate us the forecast of the last model run which is available for this model. As you can see, the situation is really easy. There are no problems on, on this, uh, in this profile. Almost no precipitation is forecasted. So the curve is really flat. If we are not satisfied with this output, we can add more stations and we can compare how the situation is looking like on tributaries or how the situation is looking like uh, in, uh, in a different uh, model run. The same information are uh, is available in the linear or graphical mode as well as in the tabular mode. So the user can, can differ the simulated and uh, forecasted values and is able to work with them. The user is able to provide some ensemble statistic assessment and is able to, to really analyze the situation as it's happening in the watershed. Okay. Let's move to another really important topic, flash flood forecasting. You know, it's, it's not easy. If you are trying to predict regional floods, which are caused by heavy rain, which occurred or affect the, the big territory, it's no so big challenge as to be predicting a small storm cells, which are moving over the area in a really short time. We created flash for flood forecasting tool, which is based on the assessment of the retention potential of the area. So we created a grid of retention potential. We created a threshold values for each time interval. And we overlay this grid with the value or with the uh, layer of the values of measured or now casted precipitation. In the end, we do have a grid of values which exceeded or that does not exceed uh, the critical amount, the threshold levels. This information is visualized in the form of map. If the county, because in the Slovakia the hydrological warning is provided for country, not for the whole country or for, for villages. So if the county is colored, we can see that there was exceeding of at least one point of, uh, of threshold. 
So what are the main benefits of the HIPAA system? We got a full overview of measured data. It doesn't matter who is the developer of the, of the probe, who is the manufacturer of the station. We got all possible available meteorological or, or hydrological data. We have full access to database. We can manage data in database. We can work with data in database and we can import or export data to and from the database. We got a map server, which enables us to have an overview, spatial overview of the situation. We does have a network of hydrological models with a lot of scenarios, what can happen. We get flash flood forecasting model. We got a warning management module. And of course, we do have some kind of decision support module, which does mean that we do have a module for uh, relation cures, uh, cross profile inventory, and so on. These all modules provide us or enables us to provide a really perfect decision, which are based on actual and forecasted situation. But can we go further? Of course we can. For example, we can create 2D hydrodynamical modeling tools. These 2D hydrodynamical modeling tools enables us to have a spatial overview where the water will be flowing in the case of overflowing of banks. This is a really big challenge. We can create a scenario of water pollution. We can create a more sophisticated flash flood forecasting tools, which will be based on municipalities and exact flowing of the water. So you can see that there is a lot of open possibilities. You know, you can say, okay, HIPPOS was created in uh, Central Europe, so there are specific hydrological and meteorological conditions. Well, I can and I will provide you some solutions which were created for different parts of the world. For example, part number one, monsoon prone area in India. You know, Kerala state, Periyara river. This is a river which was really heavily affected by heavy floods in previous years. There were serious problems with the dam operation. So what we did, we provide the analysis of the system we decide where the ideal placement of the station should be. We created the network of the model, how it should look like in the ideal solution. And in the end, we estimated forecasting profiles and we estimated of data flow for each of these forecasting systems. So now in the end, we will have a hydrological forecast for dams. We will have hydrological forecast for sensitive areas. The second case study is from absolutely different, different area. Arid condition of Arabian Peninsula. Arid condition of Riyadh city. Riyadh city is affected from time to time by heavy, heavy storms. These storms are flooding uh, parts of the city by pluvial flooding or are affecting the city by the flooding on vadis. So, at the first, we provide analysis of hydrological and meteorological stations. We provide a proposal for ideal placement of station. We provide the uh, proposal of the ideal placement of uh, meteorological radars. And we provide the analysis of the, the most sensitive areas in the city, the most sensitive areas which are sensitive to the pluvial flooding. In the end, we do have a simple rainfall run of models, which are computing the amount of water which is flowing in the bodies. And we created uh, some kind of platform which will enable the operators in all the times to have an overview what is going on in their area and if they should avoid to moving or to, to uh, driving to some affected areas. I hope that you enjoyed my presentation and I hope that the solution that we brought will be helpful as well for you. So have a nice day and I'm looking forward to your questions.